So at long last, the Astra Militarum, or Imperial Guard, is getting a new codex, army box, and model range. To help celebrate, I decided to make this video to help familiarize people with my favorite army in 40k. In this primer, I'll cover the lore, units, and models, along with some of the more famous Imperial Guard regiments. So a small point of order before I get started. Are they called the Astra Militarum, or Imperial Guard? The short answer is both are right, both in universe and outside. In universe, Astra in High Gothic means star, and Militarum means military. So then, Mono means one, and Rail means rail. In Low Gothic, it's known as the Imperial Guard. So in the real world, the army was called the Imperial Guard until someone at GW realized that they couldn't trademark that and gave them a fake Latin name, the Astra Militarum. For the remainder of this video, I'll be calling them the Imperial Guard, as that's the name I prefer. So let's get started with a small lore overview. When the Emperor of Mankind launched his Great Crusade to reconquer the Milky Way, his spearhead was his Space Marines. However, these Marines couldn't be everywhere. The galaxy is a big place, and who will do the grunt work, like garrisoning conquered worlds, putting down local insurrections, harassing the locals? And thus enters the Imperial Army, unaugmented regular soldiers. They would be used to support and do any work not important enough to devote Space Marines to. When Horus rebelled, naturally about half of the army went with him. After the heresy, the army was broken into the Imperial Navy and Imperial Guard, so that a mass defection and treason wouldn't be possible again. But what makes the Guard different besides the fact that they're regular humans? And why do they exist when Space Marines are so much better? To the second question, I'll ask an equally silly question. Why do we have soldiers when special forces exist? Think of the Space Marines like a SEAL team. Highly trained, well-equipped, incredibly specialized, and wholly inadequate to defend the Imperium. There is about a thousand Loyalist Space Marine chapters, with about a thousand Marines in each, giving us a grand total of one million Marines. Guardsmen number in the trillions. Most battles fought will never have a Marine show up, or even be aware it's happening. Oftentimes, it's the Guard acting as the first and last line of defense for humanity. So the Guard stands on three pillars, infantry, artillery, and tanks. Battles with the Guard involve waves upon wave of infantry, backed up by armored columns and artillery raining down shells and missiles from miles away. The Guard also employs various specialized units like elite special forces, vicious abhuman shock troops, powerful battle psychers, and dropships pulled from the Imperial Navy. So why play the Guard? Generally speaking, you should choose an army based on lore, aesthetics, and playstyle rather than on power level. Rules change often and power creep is a real thing and has been prevalent across the Ninth. Space Marines were the best army at the start of Ninth, and now they're one of the weakest. Imperial Knights were one of the worst armies before they got their codex, and now they're pretty good. Better to choose an army that you're passionate about rather than try and chase a meta that's super fickle. All of that being said, the Guard Codex right now seems to be pretty good. So what would I say are the perks of playing and collecting Guard? Well, for one, they're one of the more grounded, gritty, and relatable factions in the entire game. It can be hard to relate with a 9-foot-tall super soldier that has been genetically engineered to be strong enough to lift over a ton. However, people can relate with a conscript who's forced to fight for his home. The Guard are the underdogs of the setting, and people can relate to that. This groundedness extends to the model range too. Compared to other factions who have battle mechs or pipe organ tanks, the guard's workhorse is the Lehman Rust, who looks like it's been obsolete since 1941 and definitely shouldn't be kicking around in 41941. Guard vehicles have a utilitarian and rugged feel that some factions just don't have. I've found that two groups that really like guard are veterans and history buffs. As far as playstyle goes, Guard is incredibly versatile. The standard playstyle is infantry backed up by tanks and artillery, but Guard can play in so many different ways. All tanks, mechanized infantry, pure infantry, or elite infantry, among with others, are all valid different ways to play. Typically Guard armies focus on shooting, but aren't completely limited to it, like some factions. <coughs> Tow! <coughs> in a scale of Horde to Elite, Guard sits firmly on the Horde end of the spectrum. Even your most expensive infantry and tank are often 20% cheaper than other factions' equivalent. 
Don't start a guard army if you don't want to have to paint a lot of models. That leads to another downside. Cost. Buying Warhammer is expensive, and guard armies can be two to three times the size as others. There are ways to mitigate this by 3D printing, third-party models, and secondhand buying, but even with these options, Guard can be one of the most expensive armies in the game. Don't even get me started on Forge World. The playstyle of Guard really is about building a whole greater than the sum of its part. More than any other army in the game, Guard focuses on using characters like officers and advisors to buff up relatively weak units. Tank commanders lead armored columns of Lehman Russes. Infantry command squads lead platoons of heavy weapons and infantry squad. Masters of Ordnance give buffs to artillery, and commissars enforce discipline in the ranks. The army really does encourage you to build something akin to what you may see in an actual military force. Combine that with your regimental doctrines and your golden. This strength is unfortunately one of Guard's downsides. When you lose these buffing pieces, things can start to look pretty grim. Let's say your officers are assassinated, you'll lose access to powerful buffs and abilities. If your infantry gets mowed down, it doesn't matter how many officers you have, you'll be up a creek without a paddle. Every bit of your army must work in tandem if victory is to be assured. The last huge upside to the army that I want to talk about is the diversity of the models and regiments that exist in lore and in-game. Space Marines are more or less the same no matter who you're playing. Some chapters are more divergent, like Space Wolves, Black Templars, and Dark Angels, but Space Marines are always big genetically engineered super soldiers in power armor. Guard regiments can be, and are vastly different, pulling from various tropes in historical armies. The Poster Boys are the Cadian Shock Troops, who hailed from the fortress world of Cadia before its untimely demise. They are the closest to being generic sci-fi soldiers, however they do have a bit of a World War II flair, especially with their newer sculpts. If I had to describe their fighting style, I would call them the jack-of-all-traits that lend themselves well to building a combined arms force. Next are the Katachan jungle fighters who hail from the death world of Katachan, a world where everything from the fauna to the flora is trying to kill you. Humans from this world are exceptionally strong and rugged, possessing strength that would make some space marines blush. Their models are based off of the Vietnam War, or at least a Rambo movie's portrayal of Vietnam. They specialize in guerrilla warfare, and in fighting against monsters such as Tyranids. One of the main downsides to them is how old their models are. They really are showing their age. Next is the Death Corps of Krieg. Krieg is a man-made death world who owes a terrible debt to the Emperor after much of the planet revolted against the Imperium. They are incredibly grim and dour, believing that the only way to atone for their sins is to die in the service of the Imperial Guard. They are based on a conglomeration of World War I trench warfare which leads into their specialization. They excel in siege warfare and in environments that would kill regular men, like toxic polluted hive worlds or planets that have poisonous atmospheres. Games Workshop currently sell a single plastic kit of infantry. However, if you want to buy other official models, you have to go to Forge World and pay Forge World prices. $79 for an infantry squad? No thanks. There is also the Tempestus Scions, who are kind of like a sub-army in the Imperial Guard. They are highly trained stormtroopers who are armed with advanced hotshot las guns and many other special weapons like Melta and Plasma. They are characterized by their ornate armor and their specialized transports, the Torox Prime. Other famous guard regiments include the Armageddon Steel Legion, mechanized soldiers from the Hive World of Armageddon, famed for their rivalry with the Orcs, the Mordian Iron Guard, who believe that discipline and duty will win the day, characterized by their ornate uniforms. There is the Valhallen Ice Warriors, who hail from the frozen world of Valhalla, where life is cheap, stoic in the face of extreme cold and extreme odd. On the other side of the spectrum, there are the Talarn Desert Raiders, whose hit-and-run raids are legendary, striking out only to disappear like a mirage back into the desert. Next is the Vostroyan Firstborn, who arm their firstborn son or daughter with relic weapons to repay a debt that they owe the Imperium from the time of the Horus Heresy. The Elysian Drop Troops are highly trained soldiers renowned for their perfection in aerial assaults using Valkyrie dropships. And lastly, we have the Tanith First, led by the legendary Colonel Commissar Gaunt, trying to avenge the destruction of Lost Tanith. Unfortunately, these regiments have had models in the past, only for them to be discontinued. If you'd like to play with these regiments, you'll either need to convert them, buy used models off of eBay, or 3D print third-party models. Sellers like Victoria Miniatures 
Anvil Industry, and Wargate and Atlantix all sell reasonable approximations of what these regiments look like. Even with that list, I'm barely scratching the surface of regiments that exist in lore. The Attilan Roughriders, Praetorian Guard, and Last Chancers are all relatively famous in their own right, without even getting started on the Volponi Bluebloods or myriad other regiments mentioned in lore or books. You can also go out and invent your own regiment, mixing and matching what you like or think is cool. The galaxy is a huge place, and millions of regiments exist. My own custom regiment is the Pulvis Rangers, who are modeled on Cadians with a little bit of an Operation Desert Storm flair. The sky is literally the limit with the guard. The other small thing to mention is non-loyalist guard regiments like the Brood Brothers and Traitor Guard. Brood Brothers are guardsmen who have fallen under the sway of the hive mind. As such, Gene Stealer cults can take a small amount of guard units in their list, so long as they don't have a regimental tag or are a named character. If you want some guard infantry and tanks to support your Gene Stealer cults, Games Workshop sells an upgrade sprue that can be used to convert Cadian models into cultists. The other brief aside is Traitor Guard. They used to be an army in the past, but have been discontinued. However, Games Workshop sells a kill team that represents traitor forces along with a Chaos Ogrim bodyguard and a traitor enforcer who stands in for a commissar. If you want to run them in game, you'll either need to run them as a Chaos Space Marine force or homebrew your own rules. So how does one go about collecting the guard, hopefully for cheap? Here are some tips on how to build your army, especially if you want to play Cadians. As I'm writing this script, the Cadia Stands box set is still available for purchase. However, that won't be an option forever. If you're sure that you absolutely want to play this army, I would start there as it provides you with a codex, two infantry squads, a command squad, a field ordnance battery, and a sentinel. I would hold off buying multiples as it looks as though the combat patrol will be the exact same thing. If you can find the old start collecting box and don't mind mixing the old with the new, you'll get a Lehman Russ, a Commissar, and an infantry squad with heavy weapon. Unfortunately, this kit only comes with a flamer and grenade launcher and none of the other special weapons. Another good way to get a discount is to look on eBay to buy used models. These models can be really cheap and can save you painting if you really can't be bothered. The problem with buying on eBay is they may not be painted the way you want, the loadout is whatever the previous buyer decided it was, and you're putting yourself at the mercy of strangers. If you're going to buy new, I would suggest trying Amazon or a local game store first. Buying straight from GW is always the most expensive, but it is one of the most reliable ways to get your model. If you do start Imperial Guard, take it slow. It is very easy to create a huge pile of shame that you'll never end up finishing. Start with infantry, an officer or two, and a Lehman Russ and build out from there. If you see something that gets you really excited to play or paint, Buy that, and then don't buy anything else until you finish it. Don't fall for the FOMO, that Lehman Russ or Infantry Squad will still be there next week after you finish painting and assembling what you already have. Thank you so much for watching my video. This is an incredibly vast topic, and I could have literally talked for hours about it, but hopefully this is a good starting point for new players. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment and I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. This is the first video I've made like this, so let me know what I could have done better. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, and maybe check out the video that I made about painting Kazarkin. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you'll tune in for more videos.